Well, it appears the Wrexham game was just a blip. Hey guys, and welcome to episode 17 of One Team, One Dream, Into the Woods. My name is James, and on today's episode, we have two massive games in the National League. In the first game, second plays third as we go away to FC Halifax. And in the second game, first plays second as we welcome competitive rivals Bromley to Meadow Park. Two games that could define our season even this early on. And since you were last with me, it's all been going rather well. So in the last match, we had the Barnet 1-0 win, and then we had the disappointing 2-1 loss against Wrexham. I did say at the time that I hoped it was a little bit of a blip, and it appears to have been. We followed that up with back-to-back home games and back-to-back home wins. 2-0 against third, uh, the time were third place Darlington, uh, and a massive win against the team who were first in the table in the last episode, Notts County, a 2-1 home win, uh, and followed up by... A slightly less impressive, but still just as important, uh, 1-0 away win against bottom of the table, Weymouth. So as I stated in the intro, going into this game, so we face third in the table, FC Halifax, and we face first in the table, Bromley. And that leaves us second in the table, just two points off of Bromley, just two points off of FC Halifax. But more importantly, four points ahead of local rivals, Barnet. Now, this has been all the more impressive uh, based on the fact that our players have been dropping like flies. So if I go into here, we currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players out injured. One or two have just come back from injury as well. So they just come back into the squad. But we have Ben Winter, who's been out for a little while. Adebayi has recently picked up an injury. Um, he's out for another five days. Robson was injured in the last episode, I believe, uh, and this brought uh, this brought Alfie Lewis into the squad. We'll come on to him in a minute. Uh, Kuyar has picked up another knock. He is out for he is out for another couple of days, I believe. Uh, he's actually coming back to train tomorrow, so actually he may be he may be fit to to be on the bench. Uh, Wes Dobson is also out for a couple more days, along with Bob Baggeridge, and then finally Fagan is out injured again. This is his third injury this year alone. And he's out with a twisted knee. Uh, it's classed as a minor injury this time. Uh, uh, but he will still be out for uh, uh, for uh, three to eight days. So Ewan Banch comes back onto the bench again. Uh, with Cole Hurst now back up front as he should be. So as I alluded to earlier, Alfie Lewis. Alfie Lewis has been something else. He's come in. Straight away, he got pushed into the squad in the first day he was here due to Robson's in, uh, Robson's injury. He's come in four games, two goals, one player of the match, and a seven point oh three in there as a shadow striker. I did, uh, I did, I did allude to, in the previous episode to the fact that he, if he, if he impressed, he would stay, and it would make it would give Robson more of a difficult challenge of getting back into the squad if he carries on the way he has started. I see no reason why we would bring Robson back in, if I'm honest. And one final piece of news that definitely fuels today's episode. If we go into into the inbox, Alan Dunn, Bromley manager, has swiped the manager of the month away from me. Even though we have played more matches and have a higher percentage, somehow we have less points than he does. To me, that's that, se- that seems extremely fishy and... I will be content with that only if we can knock them off of the top spot today and get and, and get revenge. But before that, we can't look past the first match as second plays third as we go away to FC Halifax. And here we are with the starting 11 for the game against FC Halifax in a settled formation and a settled tactical style. You'll be glad to hear that. And here is the team for today's first game. We have Huddard in goal, a bat four of Angol, Fifield, Tricker and Daniel. McDonnell and Iqbal in central midfield. Thomas, Lewis and Williams are the attacking midfield three, with Colehurst up front in a slightly different role now where he is playing a pressing forward with Lewis sat in behind him as the shadow striker. 
So let's get into the match. So this season, I'm not expecting Cole Hurst with his injury and with a slightly different position, a uh, slightly different, uh, slightly different uh, instructions. I'm not expecting him to score as many goals as he did last season. Last season was definitely an anomaly. Um, but I think this formation is creating us a number of chances. It also means that it was also necessary while we had so many strikers that injured. Um, but I think it gives us a little bit more depth uh, and a little bit more of a, a less two-dimensional shape than the 4-2-4 did, as much as the 4-2-4 did allow us to score goals. And we have a highlight here on 12 minutes. We have a throw in in their half. Iqbal and Daniel do a 1-2, but Daniel wins the ball back. Win the centre for Lewis. Lewis just puts over the top. He was looking for uh, looking for his third goal of the season. Unfortunately, he couldn't get it on target. And we have another, a same, almost a duplicate highlight here. Daniel with the ball, this time to Lewis, to Iqbal. Iqbal out wide, to Lewis into the centre, takes a shot. The ball is deflected, back to Iqbal, back into the centre. This time, Ray, Raymond, the, uh, the uh, Halifax uh, defender, manages to clear it. But only as far as our defender, to Tricker, to Angol, to McDonnell, looking to build play again. And go out wide. He's in loads of space. Whips it into the centre. To Williams at the back post. Unfortunately, Billy Williams is offside. And his goal is chalked off. And it stays at nil-nil. And goal with a great cross in the centre. I mean, that is tight. That is tight. I, I question whether a linesman gives that, really, uh, in, in real life. But we'll... Uh, uh, we'll uh, we're not, we're not going to argue that. But we do have another highlight here on 42 minutes. Can we score yet again, but this time make it count? Madonna with the ball out wide. Is he going to pass it back to, uh, to Angle? No, he smashes to keep the ball even, even from pressure from the defenders. Angle with the ball. Gets across into the centre. To Igbao, heads it in. To Lewis, in off the post. This is disallowed yet again. That's two goals in this half we have had disallowed for offsides. Angle with the chip back. To Igbao. He was. He was just coming from an offside position. He should have left it for Colehurst. Colehurst wasn't offside. If he'd have left it, we should. We would have gone in at half time at one nil up. But a very promising first half. Uh, our xG is really, really good. However, we've only put one one shot on target so far in this game. Um, but ha FC Halifax haven't done much more. I think what I may do going into the second half is let's go in. Let's go out with a positive mentality. My assistant manager suggested we go out with a balanced mentality uh, in this game, but FC Halifax don't look like they're uh, they're up for it today. So I want to take advantage of this. I'm going to pump my fist. I can't pump my fist. Point the finger. I agree with my assistant manager. I'm not necessarily I'm not happy with what's going on. Uh, yes, the two goals were chalked for offside, but why were they offside? They shouldn't have been offside. Uh, we should have been keeping onside or thinking about where we're going. But Huddard with a goal kick on 50 minutes. Whip forward to Lewis. Out to Williams. Williams has a little bit of space to run into. Can he get across into the centre? He can. Chips it in looking for Lewis. Unfortunately, he can't get to it. And McDermott now has the ball for Halifax to Woods. Woods with the weird ball across goal. But Thomas so Thomas managed to collect it to McDonald. He puts Thomas through. Into the centre of Colehurst. Lewis takes a shot. Keepers flailing all over the place. But his defenders managed to uh, get their bodies in the way. And yet another opportunity goes begging. And I'm worried that the way this game is going, that it's going to be one goal in this game that's going to uh, that's going to get the win here. Before I make any changes, I'm going to demand some more for the players. We'll give them another 10 minutes before we start making changes. I'm trying to change. I'm trying to shake up the way that I normally do my substitutions to see if it makes any difference, as it is a new game this year. On 70 minutes, we've done nothing more. Let's change things around a little bit. Let's put Iqbal forward. I know he's on a booking, but let's put him up there as a, an advanced playmaker. Let's bring on Mundell for him. Push Mundell forward as a Mazala. See if we can try and try and create something in that front four. It's trying to try to maybe it's because the opportunities haven't been there for uh, for Colher. So we'll push him for a little bit more as well. See how that goes before we make uh, any more changes. I think that makes more sense. Changing little bit by little bit and see if it makes any difference and play it like that instead. Right, less than 10 minutes left and Halifax have a free kick in their half. Ball is with Davis. Davis and Hannah passing it between themselves. Whip forward looking for their striker but, uh, but Fifield manages to clear it but only far as Stanley. Stanley goes all the way back to Hannah in uh, 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 in the centre back. To Angol, to Iqbal. We're now looking to bring it forward. Thomas, can we create something in this half? We've done nothing, it feels like, so far. Mundo has the ball. First touch. What a shot by Mundo. I mean, I almost feel like I could, I almost feel like I had a hand in creating that. I can't, I don't have enough confidence in my tactical ability to believe that I made a difference there. But I think bringing Mundo on, 
putting him in the Mazala position. I don't think he'd have been in that position if he wasn't playing Mazala. But they took that ball forward. They gave him the space. And he smashed it into the bottom corner to put us ahead against Halifax. And straight away, we have another highlight. Are we going to make it two in quick succession? Williams with the ball to, the, to score Mundell, to Iqbal, to Williams. And I think we have a penalty. Do we have a penalty? We do have a penalty. Who's taking the penalty? It's going to be Colehurst to take the penalty. We score him to score 39 goals last season. Can he score another this today? He can score today. He hasn't had a, it's only his second goal of the season so far. Obviously, his injury has hampered him a lot this season, but hopefully a bit of a run in the side now, and especially if we're playing well, he's going to mean he at least he'll get a hat full of goals, I think, this season. Uh, and build his confidence because he is losing star rating as well I've noticed he's not been training as hard as he has been previously but with, only, with less than four minutes to go I am going to take Thomas off says Thomas is struggling so we'll bring on Courtney Watson for the last few minutes just to see out this match and it, it keeps us second in the table I presume one Bromley are winning as well we'll better double check that in a moment but there we go utterly dominant performance based on the XG Halifax weren't even in it and we are deserved of our win, especially based on the 1.74 um, XG rating. Is definitely our 2-0 no win is definitely justified, and and that's even with our front four still not providing. Iqbal had a better second half; he's up to a 6.6 .6 now from a 6.3. But it's again, it's this, it's it's our defensive areas, our midfield and our defence are playing very well at the moment. It's keeping the teams out allowing only a couple of goals to be the difference between us and winning. Outstretched arms. Well done, lads. Another good win for us. I think that's four on the bounce now for us, which is absolutely brilliant. But here we are. Where is Bromley in the t uh, on here? Bromley, 3-0 win. Laying, uh, laying the pain on to Havant uh, Haven and Waterlooville, who are down in 24th place. So that was that. That was always going to be a win. That would be one of the shocks, I think, of the season so far. If uh, if Waterlooville managed to get a, a point, uh, managed to get even a point in that game, but it still does only leave us two points off of Bromley. So the next match winner goes top. Here we are, the second match of today's episode, and it's another huge match. It is first versus second against competitive rival Bromley for the top spot. Even early on, this could be a big decider in terms of how the season progresses. Now, we've got uh, Angol is on international duty. Uh, it did also say that Kuyar was going to be away on international duty, but he still seems to be here. Uh, so he'll be playing in today's game, even though he's not fully fit. Um, but uh, we do have Williams on the bench if we do need to bring him on. So the only changes are Kuyar comes back into the side after injury. Uh, Femi also Femi comes in for Angol. Other than that, we're exactly the same as we were in the previous match. We're going to go out, try and do the same thing as we did against Halifax. Try and try and nullify the opposition as we did and try and get another win against a rival. We didn't manage to beat Sutton early on the season, but I think we'll be completely justified if we can beat by Barnet and top of the table Bromley. And of course, regardless of all of that, regardless of league, regardless of form, the biggest thing is we need payback on Bromley for their manager stealing the Manager of the Month award from me. Completely unjustified for him getting that, and yet they were somehow, he was somehow given, mysteriously given extra points ahead of me, even though I had a better win ratio and uh, more games played. We have a highlight here on 19 minutes. Iqbal with the ball to McDonnell. 1 2 with McDonnell. Chips it out wide. Find, managed to find Thomas. Back into McDonnell again. Now to Femi. Puts it through to Colehurst. Two to Thomas. Thomas in the penalty area. Came back back in. It's a pe it's a penalty. Roberts comes in with the rash challenge. Right on the edge of the penalty area. Thomas goes down. Colehurst now steps up. Can he score two penalties within in two matches? In off the post. I mean, that was about as close as he was going to get uh, to uh, without actually missing the goal net altogether. But he managed to put it in off the post into the back of the net. Putting us 1-0 up after less than 20 minutes for his third goal of the season and hopefully the momentum swing that pushes us off in the rest of this match. But almost straight away, less than four minutes later, we have another highlight. But uh, Bromley had a, a free kick. We've now won the ball back with Kuyar. Kuyar manages to go past his man. is tackled, but he manages to keep the ball and then a poor pass ends up with Trotter. Now Wilson has the ball. Lewis can bring it for Bromley. Brilliant uh, tackle by Iqbal. Thomas now has the ball. Lewis 
to Colehurst. He's in the penalty area. He's got no one else with him, though. Back to Thomas. Thomas shoots from range. In off the other post. Colehurst scored his first his penalty by scoring off the right. Thomas smashes it against the left woodwork into the back of the net, putting us 2-0 up very early in this match. I mean, there's still a long way to go. But this is fantastic. If we're able to do this against top of the table, who says that we, who says that we can't win this this year? But Bromley do have a corner. Went to the centre. But at the back, I think it was Roberts at the back. He hits the crossbar. We managed to clear the ball. Colehurst has the, ta- has the ball, but uh, Diego tackles him, causing a foul. And that ends the highlight. Lewis with the ball to Kuyar. Back to Wickball. Now through to Kuya on the penalty area. Takes a shot from range. Didn't uh, uh, We've scored a couple of those this season. Where it didn't look like it quite had the uh, momentum to take it into the back of the net. But the keeper completely mistimes it. Sl- slips underneath the keeper into the back of the net. And after 33 minutes, Kuyar, with his third goal of the season, puts us 3-0 up against Bromley. The fans in this grind must be going absolutely ballistic at this point. They are in dreamland. It's not even half time yet. I mean, I was not expecting that. 3 0 at half time. Look at the XG. We are absolutely running away with this. I mean, they've had one shot on target this entire game. We've only had three, but we've scored all three of them. What I think I might even do, I may regret doing this, but I'm going to do positive. Let's go positive in this game. Let's see if we can ride a wave of momentum through this and, and, uh, and end up top of the table. Diogo with the throw in to Thompson. To Roberts, wasn't quite paying attention, but he chips it forward to Wilson. Doesn't go anywhere. Huddard with a spectacular diving save. I think he probably could have just collected that. Either or he mistimed his run. But Huddard hoofs it forward. Look, manages to find Lewis. Lewis in a little bit of space. Can he put it across to Colehurst? In the penalty area, yet another penalty. Diogo this time, instead of Roberts, takes out Lewis. Colehurst steps up for his second of the game and number four for us. And he puts it into the same corner. Cooler this time than the last one. No, he didn't require the post this time. His fourth goal of the season. Our fourth of the game. And after 72 minutes, you've got to think that we are home and dry now. And top of the table. And at Bromley's expense as well. Right, let's make a substitution. Now we're 4-0 up. We've probably got a couple of tired legs. Let's bring Williams off Kuyar. Uh, let's take Iqbal off and bring on... Mundell and hopefully that will see out the game we have a corner with McDonnell whip to the centre Thomas can't get to it it is cleared and Lagool I presume that is is coming forward in lots of space we were in injury time so there's very little chance they're going to get four goals but surely we can hold them out yes we can try and keep that clean sheet Huddard with the ball now hoofed forward unfortunately Bromley win it back but McDonnell manages to deflect the pass to Thomas to Mundell can we get number five? McDonnell now with the ball. Looking to bring around his man to Lewis. To Colher. Some really nice passing here. We are playing really, really well in this game. Some really nice... nice, A nice football. Thomas, though, puts it forward. Didn't go anywhere. That was a completely nothing highlight. But that doesn't matter. Because we have smashed Bromley 4-0 at Meadow Park. What a get! This will be a game surely that will be remembered for a long time, especially if it ends with us staying at the top of the table. There's a long way to go, but I think this goes a long way to giving us the momentum to at least Christmas. And almost everyone on the field had a positive result. Uh, Colehurst, yes, he had two penalties, but he's back in the goals again, and back with a positive rating. Everyone is above a six point nine, which is absolutely fantastic. I mean, outstretched arms, well done, boys! Absolutely brilliant. I'm not sure if that's five or six on the trot now, but uh, it puts us at the top of the tree for the time being to end the episode. All the fans are delighted. Also, I just we're also three points ahead of Wrexham, and we are six points ahead of Barnet and Cheltenham in seventh and eighth place. What a great episode! Right, where are we going to come back? Right, I'm going to uh, I'm going to jump jump forward a chunk of time now. So we're going to go into December because I feel if we carry on if we carry on with this, there's not really anybody in here. We're facing a lot of middling teams over the next over the next month and a half or so. So there's not really anybody that I'd say I'd want to face. Chesterfield is probably the only one. Maybe we do come back for that. Yeah, I think we'll come back for Dulwich, Hamlet and Chesterfield. Team that knocked us out of the playoffs last season. We'll do that. And then after that, we'll jump forward to Sutton and Torquay. Uh, and then we've got the home Barnet fixture in there as well. 
But for the next episodes, we Dulwich Hamlet and Chesterfield, the back end of November. So I've got you know eight or so games to better play through, including the fourth qualifying round. Uh, one thing that happened between the matches I didn't mention: we've been drawn against a uh, Vanarama North side Hereford in the FA Cup fourth qualifying round. That should hopefully be a very straightforward uh, match for us and put us through yet again to the uh, put us through for a second season running to the FA Cup first round proper. But as I said. We'll find out. We'll find out how we got on with that when we come back for Joelwich Hamlet and Chesterfield. So that episode makes it five wins in a row. If you if you enjoyed that, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of all future FM Twenty One videos as we plough through our second season at Boreham Wood. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>